Okay, right here is a 1965 Bucyrus Siri 280B. The 280B was introduced by Bucyrus Siri in 1962 as a replacement for the 270B, which, when introduced earlier in 1960, had claimed the title as the world's first statically controlled electric mining shovel. Now, let's go and take a closer look at the 280B. The 280B was designed to swing a dipper ranging from 8 to 18 cubic yard capacity. 15 cubic yards was normally standard for this machine. Here you can see where the hoist ropes connect to the top of the dipper. And here you can see the Bucyrus designed tubular dipper handle. Forty two inch or forty eight inch crawler shoes were available for the two eighty B, depending on what the customer preferred. When compared to the older two seventy B, the 280B featured a longer and wider undercarriage, measuring 26 feet 1 inch in length. This shovel has a top travel speed of 1.05 miles per hour. Right here you can see where the trailing cable would connect to bring power to the machine. And here you can see where the propelling gear and axle shaft connect to the crawler frame. In addition to having a larger undercarriage than the 270B, the 280B also featured a larger diameter swing circle. And here you can see all of the individual rollers, which will rotate the shovel around the swing circle when the swing gear engages. And to help give you an idea of the size of a 280B, this shovel measures 20 feet 4 inches tall from the ground to the top of the house and 36 feet 7 inches tall from the ground to the top of the A-frame. Let's go up inside. From here you can get a good overview inside the machinery house on the 280B. Mounted in the front of this machine is the hoist drum, which you can see right here. And mounted directly behind it was a 750 horsepower electric motor to power the hoisting function on this machine. Mounted in the front directly ahead of the swing circle would have been two vertical swing motors, each developing 188 horsepower to power the swing function.
mounted on the right side of this machine was the low and high voltage electrical cabinets, which you can see right here. And you can see what remains of all the electrical breakers. Mounted on the back of this machine's house are the two exhaust fans, which you can see right here. On the back of this machine sits the big General Electric motor generator set, which you can see right here. And this is what creates all the power for this machine when it would be in operation. This right here is the main drive motor. Connected to it is the crowd generator. You can see what's left of it right here. This would create power for the 188 horsepower crowd motor. And to the immediate left was the hoist generator. And off to the far left, the swing generator. And right here, you can see the main air tank. Inside of this cabinet that you see mounted on the left side of this machine is where the master controllers were located, which control the output of the magnetic amplifiers, which operated under static control for smooth response. These varied the intensity and direction of the exciting current, which establishes the voltage for the main generators. And as you can see, a lot of this equipment, such as the controllers here, have been removed over time. Just like its predecessor, the 280B featured Bucyrus Erie's newly designed single-piece boom, which you can see right here. This design was first introduced on the 270B and was a departure from the older two-piece hinge design. Mounted in the center of the boom is the shipper shaft, which you can see right here. And this is what the tubular dipper handle runs through. And the two ropes that you see off to the right and left sides of the shipper shaft control the crowding mechanism. This is what will extend or retract the dipper handle. These two ropes you see right here run all the way up to the top of the boom to the double hoist sheaves. And this is what will raise and lower the dipper. And right here, you can see the crowd drum. On the top of this machine's house is the A-frame, which you can see right here, which the support ropes connect to to support the boom. Let's go up inside and check out the operator's cab. Here you can get a good overview of the operator station on the 280B. Let's take a look at what some of these controls do. Okay. 
These two big foot pedals that you see on the floor directly in front of the operator control the swing function on this shovel. The right pedal would swing the shovel to the right and the left would swing the shovel to the left. These two hand levers that you see off to the left and right side of the operator's seat not only control the hoist and crowding functions on the shovel attachment, but will also control the left and right side track when this machine is engaged into the travel mode. Off to the left side, here you can see a control panel with switches to control the hoist drum brake, the air compressor, the crowd hoist brake, and the swing brake. This button that you see right here is the MG stop button, and this button over here would start the MG set. This switch that you see over here on the right side controls the heater, and this one will disengage the hoist motor from the dig mode to engage the propelling gear. The crawlers on the 280B are driven through the hoist motor by an air actuated electrically controlled clutch mounted on the motor subshaft by a gear type coupling which in turn drives the propel motors through a herringbone pinion and roller chain sprocket. This is in the dig mode and by switching it forward engages the machine into the propel mode. And from right here you can get a crystal clear view of what the operator would see if he were running a 280B. Right here, you can see another electrical cabinet. From underneath here, you can get another good view of the lower works on this machine. And the overall operating weight of a 280B, depending on the year of build, can range anywhere from 380 to 495 tons. The 280B would enjoy a long 20-year production period, and during that time, numerous upgrades were made to this machine by Bucyrus. The 280B was later discontinued in 1982, and in total, 81 units were built by Bucyrus Erie, and 14 units were built by Komatsu Bucyrus in Japan. But there she is, a 1965 Bucyrus Erie 280B.